How does a kid from Ohio end up playing at Alabama? Well, originally, um, I wanted to go to Notre Dame. That was my dream. I was oh, good choice. Catholic kid from Cincinnati, so like there was a pipeline. I always wanted to play at Notre Dame. Um, favorite movie was like Rudy growing up. So, you know, unfortunately, the opportunity didn't present itself. But um, visited Alabama, I think five or six times before I committed. Just unofficial. Me and my dad driving down, and uh, just really fell in love with the place. And now, five years later, what are you going to take away from your time here? Uh, an undergraduate degree, a master's degree, uh, hopefully three, three national championships. Your first two national championships, you were a uh, red shirt the first year, yeah. and then the second one, you only played a handful of plays, right, because you were coming off the yeah. bench. Uh, but you were around these championship teams. What did you see in them that you see in this team? You know, a lot of guys on our team who have been here in 2012, you know, we always say to each other, you know, we haven't really done anything because we weren't starters on that team. You know, we, we contributed because of the scout team or whatever it had to be. So I think it was a, a big point for everybody this year. Um, was It was kind of a last go around, our last chance to do what we wanted to do. Everyone that I talk to uh, when I mention you and, and they talk about what a great guy you are and the fact that you have a graduate degree and they all talk about what you've done for Jake Coker in helping him to assimilate into this offense. Can you describe that relationship and how you have helped him grow as a quarterback? I think when Jake first got here, you know, it's different versus a guy who's coming out of high school because he's already built relationships at Florida State. He's an older guy, he's already done things, seen things. So his first year, he really tried to gain respect and um, the trust from all of his teammates. I think he's done a great job of that. There's a particularly funny video of the captains and Coach Saban. You're at a children's hospital yep. in Dallas before mm -hmm. the Cotton Bowl. How did that come about? Every bowl game we go to, we always go to a children's hospital. The entire team went, and um, we're, we're, we're sitting in a room. Uh, it was the four captains, Coach Saban, and we're broadcasting on a TV network so that other kids in the hospital who can't come down can kind of watch it. The headphones we were wearing were actually microphones that we could hear and plug into. So they came around with you know four or five pairs and like you know you guys can pick whatever you want, and Coach Saban picks the pink ones right off the bat. So it was like everybody was like, all right, those are gone. Does Coach Saban ever let loose? Does he ever let his hair down? Every now and then, it'd be the right person at the right time and like just the perfect moment. If you don't really totally know him really well and you try to make a joke, um, it's gonna it's gonna backfire on you. How about the dinosaur dance? I love that. That was awesome. I don't know how that came about, but when that hit you know, social media or whatever. Um, that was hilarious. I mean, you guys were all dancing, and yeah. I'm not sure he knew quite what to do. I don't really knew what he wanted. I don't know what, if he really knew what was going on, but um, yeah, he, he loves his team, and uh, I don't think he's going to be doing a dab or anything like that, what all other coaches do, but that was pretty funny. He could tie Bear Bryant with five titles, which would be the most of any coach in the history of the NCAA. What, in your mind, makes him a once-in-a-lifetime coach? I think it's just the attention to detail that he has about any aspect of the program that no stone's ever going to go unturned, and um, you know, I think it's, it just enables him to just to deal with things so um, really, like just so fast, and not really push anything off. You know, everything's just dealt with. I call that the process here at Alabama. What do they mean when they talk about the process? You know, it, it's molding a kid who's coming out of high school um, into a man, and I, I'm, I think I'm, I've been processed. That's, that's, that's the kind of guy well, I say. What does that mean? I don't, I don't know how to you. describe it. <clears throat> when I came in. You know, I was a 17 year old kid. Um, I had a lot of ambitions on what I wanted to do in life, but I didn't really know. Um, and he, he really taught me what it meant to be um, a college football player. You know, when we're going into a game, we never feel there's ever a chance that we are going to lose or that we can ever get beat because we're always more prepared than the other team. To be at a level where if you don't win a national championship, that year was a failure. Um, so to be at a place where that bar is set that high. I think it's just an incredible testament to him and all the guys who came before him. So what would the title mean? It would mean everything. Um, it would be incredible and uh, be an awesome way to, to leave this incredible um, chapter in my life.